one of the things we used to do, and I don't know if it's something to bring back or not, but at the beginning of every meeting, after the president introduced the meeting, we would do introductions. And all the members, one row at a time, the people who were members, not guests, not protract, there was no protract then, would get to stand up and have seven seconds to introduce themselves. And we had a timer with, you know, and a, and a gong and everything to make sure people kept on time. But the, part of the idea was you got to promote yourself a little bit if you were a member. But also, everyone else got to see who you were. Mm -hmm. And I think one of the problems we have today is people don't know who, any of this, who anybody is. So if you got to hear somebody say, you know, I talk on customer service and leadership month after month after meeting after meeting, you got to get some sense of, okay, that's somebody who does that. And then you got to know what other people did. At ProTrack <coughs> last month, I'm in ProTrack now, but at ProTrack last month, uh, Jessica it, <coughs> it, came and spoke. And I knew her from her picture because she doesn't come to meetings, or hasn't been able to come to meetings. I knew she was on the board, but I had no clue what she did in life. And she talked about what she does for colleges and things like that, and I was impressed. And I said, once again, there is an enormous amount of talent in this organization, but we don't get to see it very often. So, ways that we can get people visible I mentioned to Karen that one of the things we used to try to do, didn't always succeed, used to try to do is each year we would try to have the president-elect who was going to be president the following year do a presentation of some sort to the group so that the group could get to see this person as a speaker, not just as a functionary. And I think if, if that's possible to do something like that or to, to get people involved, that's good. We would get people to do introductions of speakers. We had a training 10 or 11 years ago because the introductions were getting pretty sloppy. And we wanted to train people how to do a great introduction of a speaker. So we had, I, I wrote to a bunch of NSA speakers. I still have this on my website. A lot of top NSA speakers. How do they like to be introduced? How do they like to be introduced at a regular event where they're the speaker? How do they like to be introduced at an NSA event? And then we trained people so that they could get up and give an introduction without reading it necessarily. Every opportunity that you get up in front of NSA, I think, should be an opportunity to be great. We used to train people to give announcements. Somebody's going to give an announcement about an event coming up. We say, okay, you have two minutes. Rehearse it. Plan what you're going to say. So that when you get up there, this is the best announcement that you've ever given. That's, I think, kind of a, an interesting focus. But some other things we used to do, we had, this was before there was a, now we have an afternoon program, which was a super session, and before even that, we had a, a resource sharing thing, which I think occasionally would be a useful thing, where it's kind of like a brainstorming. People got together and say, I, somebody say, I need to know a great printer. And other people would talk about who they knew as a printer. Or I need to have somebody, we kind of do this with SpeakerNet News, I know a lot of you do are involved with that. But if somebody needs something or has a question about how do I handle the fees to charge somebody if they're going to videotape me. And then there'd be a discussion about that. So people could bring up on a topic discussion. Back before there was ProTrack, we had, we had different kinds of events to raise money. We had, a, let's see, this was a... couple of excellence in our lives. This was a program we put on where, where we invited the public to come and we had training sessions. All, it was an all-day program. Different type things about speaking. The speakeasy, this was called. An, another one where just a small 
uh, multiple tracks, kind of like a mini convention, mm -hmm. multiple tracks mm -hmm. on different topics of speaking. It also gave an opportunity to those members of those of our members who wouldn't be able to give a main presentation to have a chance to speak. We had showcases. A showcase is where you show off your speaking ability for people who can hire you. We bring in meeting planners, and we'd have a showcase to let them see in a, in a ten minute presentation what you could do. This, this was one of our fundraisers. fundraisers. It was called Sumo Enchanted Evening. <laughs> it was a, a, a Japanese theme and was a, a silent auction where people, they, they got prizes and also members donated things. So there were a lot of fundraisers back in those days. There was, in my year as president, we had four special programs. We had a FRIP program, a thing called an unmeeting a showcase for meeting planners and a seminar smorgasbord, which was another one of these training things. These were mostly fundraisers, but they also gave the members an opportunity to speak. We used to produce directories yes. back when there were directories. This was the very first <coughs> desktop published directory in 1987, which I did myself. And now we have it all on, online, which makes sense, but just to kind of show you what we used to do for directories. Just a couple of things and I'll wrap up. I think it's important to realize there, there was a time when we were, and I don't know if we still are, probably not, but there was a time when we were by far the biggest chapter in the country. And in many ways, we always thought the best chapter in the country. And part of what that led, led us to mentally was to say, we don't have anything anyone can teach us. Sort of a not invented here syndrome, because we're the best chapter, clearly. I think there are <coughs> lots of good chapters and lots of good ideas from other chapters. And I think we should be adopting ideas and hearing what people do in other chapters and seeing what we can bring from other chapters here, not just speakers, but ideas for events, kinds of things. Learn, when you go to a convention, talk to people in other chapters and say, what's the best event you guys have put on in the last year and why? And see if you can bring back some ideas. I said, <laughs> I made a note, I said, watch out for dinosaurs like me. <laughs> we mean well, <laughs> but, but sometimes, could give the impression of, well, it used to be so much better back then. I think it's important to try things. We've tried things. One of the things we tried that didn't work was to have multiple tracks. We had, we had an advanced track and a beginner's track, or a less advanced track, during the day. So there'd be two parallel programs. That didn't work. Everyone wanted to go to the advanced track, whether they belonged in there or not. Mm -hmm. 